All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, it is just me, uh, the mild-mannered political commentator who uh, was once a Donald Trump supporter and who now has jumped off the train. Uh, and now I'm, you know, I'm injured badly, but I'm going to get back up and support Tulsi Gabbard for president. That's what I've decided to do. Um, so I want to talk about this Venezuela issue and how the backdrop of Venezuela is why people need to support Tulsi Gabbard. And you're seeing it on the news every day. By the way, you're not seeing the correct information on most news channels. Uh, I I've rarely recommend and tell people go watch uh, a network or a channel or anything. And you're, people are going to laugh. They're going to call me a Russian bot like I've been talking about. RT America right now, Rick Sanchez, Chris Hedges... Lee Camp, some of the commentators they have over there are fearless. The Kaiser Report, talking about finances, spot on, understands what the banks are doing and all the um, chicanery going on. Thought of that word off the top of my head. That's what it is. It's probably worse. But Venezuela unfolding, and who's reporting the facts on the ground? Well, we've heard that the United States, they tried to send humanitarian aid and uh, some people lit it on fire and didn't get in there. It's not the full story. Um, we've heard that there's just no food on the shelves in Venezuela. By the way, Jimmy Dore, a guy I don't agree with all the time, but he, he's very interesting. He sends somebody over there and they, they go into a supermarket and they find, they, they say there's no toothpaste and they find all this toothpaste. Look, again, I'm not for pure socialism. All right, I come from center right. I don't mind hybrid because it's kind of what we have now. And then we need to figure out what we want to do. Do we want to? Do we want a little bit of socialism over here? Because we do have it, and this is what people on the right sometimes don't understand. It's like you're not Donald Trump ran on saving or strengthening Social Security, right? He did. He, that's one of his platform. And people on the right, well, how you can't say that? Well, what do you do? Say so you're going to abolish? I mean, uh, 20 years ago, you might be able to say that and private, say you're going to privatize everything. People are, have they paid into it? Again, and it's like, it's a, it's a government-run insurance company, basically, is what it is. Um, and if you don't like it, then, you know, yell at your representatives and tell them to make it better. That's what you got to do. Um, and it's not pure socialism, and it's not pure capitalism. That's the... That's the truth of all of this stuff. If you wanted pure capitalism uh, with no constraints, um, you've got that. It's called Wall Street. <clears throat> and um, anyway, so let's get back to the whole Venezuela thing. In the background, you've got all this stuff happening. And you've got this one candidate who's out there who says, hey, uh, regime change bad. And they go, no, no, no. This guy Maduro, he's really bad. In Venezuela, they have nothing there. Uh, not everybody and not everywhere. Since the United States, however, has, um, I was going to say turned off the power. I don't have proof of that, but it's just, I'm just throwing it out there. All right, so since the sanctions, which we've doubled down, imagine this, the people are already suffering because the, the economy is, no question about the economy was mismanaged and there's problems and Certainly, uh, the cost of oil coming down uh, didn't help the Venezuelan people a whole lot. Um, and they have all of these oil reserves. And we're like, doo -doo -doo, let's sprint down there. And, and Mike Pompeo, let's hurry up and get in there. John Bolton, the Monroe Doctrine. Can you imagine this archaic thing where we've just, everywhere we've gone in South America, Latin America, we've screwed it up and made it worse. But yet we're going to invoke the same doctrine that has made things worse. <laughs> it's just, uh, and people just, and look, there are people on quote unquote my side. Well, America needs to be the world's superpower. And here comes Tulsi Gabbard. You know how we can be the superpower of the world? Restraint, restraint. Let them work out their own problems. Um, if we're gonna actually send humanitarian aid, uh, we can't be doing these humanitarian aid drops uh, as a false flag operation, okay, or as some kind of political 
stunt to get the people. Look, the people in this country, all right, need to turn off the view. They need to turn off some of their creature comfort information stuff that they get, their nonsensical celebrity news stuff, and pay attention to an issue like Venezuela. Because then they might understand that we as a country need to take care of seeing this was another thing that I liked about Trump. We need to take care of America first. Okay? And we need to stay out of the way of other countries as they work out their issues. Now in Syria we were told of course that Assad gassed his own people. They they've done reports and they they came back with there were some traces of chlorine but it could not they couldn't determine if it were, you know, cuz it was a naturally occurring thing anyway in the environment in that in that country and it could have been from something else. But we launched a bunch of missiles that missed their targets, predominantly missed their targets, um, based on the fact that um, we got some intel that we thought, we thought it allowed us just to go over there and do what we did. Trump at that point had crossed the line that a lot of his supporters thought he would never go. He'd never grow, go over that line, you know? Um, it's like Obama with his red line, you know, and they kept moving the line, moving the line. But um, they were fighting. The CIA was fighting. And, and, and Tulsi Gabbard says that every single time. The CIA. You, did, you think the CIA might be involved in Venezuela right now? I mean, with these neocon hacks leading the way, uh, I think they are. And I think we can all be smart enough to know that this will be a big task if Tulsi were to become the president. She is fighting against the entire deep state, which is basically the war state, which is basically helping Wall Street. I mean, you can just connect all of these dots here, folks. Yeah, all these companies, Fortune 500 war machine companies. I mean, you've got to change the economy. You've got to, you've got to get away from that business model. And nobody seems to realize that the company uh, or the country can't just be funded uh, on the war machine anymore because it's it's you know it's like this consumerism thing like every christmas they're they're mad because sales weren't as high as they were the year before they have to always keep going up 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 people have to spend more and more and and bankrupt themselves and and uh, ruin their families in the process because people and kids and whatever are expecting all these goodies and um, basically all becoming spoiled brats, you know what I mean? Because we just have created this, uh, this culture of expectation. I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but there you go. Uh, you never know what I'm going to talk about. Bottom line is, with Venezuela in the backdrop, Tulsi Gabbard's candidacy is instructive. And people should take a hard look at what our foreign policy is. There's really only one candidate out there right now who has been consistent on this and who has made it the centerpiece of their campaign. That would be Tulsi Gabbard. All right, I'm done with this video. Uh, RT America for coverage on this stuff. Just absolutely amazing right now. They are just doing a fantastic job. Whereas all the other corporate media pretty much spouting the same crap. They're talking about Omar again, who spoke some truth, even though you may not agree with her other politics or you may think she's got other motives. Doesn't, doesn't matter. She spoke the truth. And um, again, uh, this has to do with um, sending money to a foreign country, uh, which is very similar to doing regime change in a foreign country. It's none of our business. And we need to get back to worrying about America and then being uh, using diplomacy and, and every ounce of it before we spend any more money and spill any more American blood anywhere in the world. All right, done. See ya.